What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I hope you are all doing well out there and staying safe. Now, today is a bit of an impromptu video. I have not scripted any of this. We're going to be taking a look at the title update 9.1 patch notes, as well as taking a look at the new leaked trap explosive skill. Uh, but before we begin, as always, if you like this kind of dedicated division content, please take just a second to smash that sub button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. And with that out of the way, let's begin. As I just said, the title update 9.1 patch notes were made live yesterday, whereas the patch went live today. And I just wanted to read through a few of these as I've had a chance to experience them. And I'll make a few comments as we review through the different changes. So first up, let's read the developer comment, which is the balance changes in title update 9.1 are intended to eliminate outliers with NPC weapons, abilities, and behaviors. These are specific fixes and a first pass at balancing these outliers. If further adjustments are necessary, then they will be made in Title Update 10. We are also looking at global NPC balance with Title Update 10. So first up, and a lot of these have to do with NPCs, very few to do with agents. First up is NPC status effect nerfs. Uh, essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have reduced damage caused to players by burn and by bleed status effects. Uh, I can tell you this morning that as I was taking over some level 4 CPs on Heroic, Burn is still pretty active. Um, I was in cover and I got scorched by a non-tank uh, elite cleaner and they shredded off almost a million points worth of armor very quickly. So Burn is still prevalent, uh, but it's not just like an insta-kill. That's basically what they're trying to do. Uh, also, NPC weapon nerfs. Uh, certain NPC weapons dealt significantly more damage than others. These changes should bring them more in line with other NPC damage output capabilities. So the changes, they reduce the damage of out-of-cover accuracy of SMG used by the Red Bar Hyena Assaults. We're all used to those guys. Uh, they tend to strafe left and right. They hold their uh, SMG kind of at a 90-degree angle up above their heads with one hand and they can just shred through your armor. Uh, they have been reduced. Reduced range of cleaner's tank flamethrower. I'm totally positive about that one. That's a great one. Uh, nerfed hyena RC cars. So the damage, uh, the lingering fire from them, the burn confused status effects have been reduced and they've also reduced how often they can deploy their cars. They also uh, nerfed the Black Tusk suicide drones, reduced damage of them, and uh, reduced how often they can be deployed. And they also fixed an issue where NPCs could throw a Firefly, Firefly excuse me, variant, which did an excessive amount of damage to players. I personally never seen that. Uh, that's possibly uh, comes off of uh, maybe one of the rogue encounters. I don't know. I've never seen it, but uh, apparently it was fixed. Another big one, NPC grenade throw accuracy nerfs. Uh, the NPCs were too accurate with their grenades. These changes introduced the idea of each NPC having an optimal distance for their grenade accuracy. So what they're trying to say in there is that uh, the factions now will have different throwing accuracy. So you're going to have to learn them. The further away the NPC targets is, the less accurate their grenades will be. The optimal distance varies based on faction and veterancy. For example, the outcast. Okay, I'm not going to redo that. Changes reduced grenade accuracy with distance to target. Definitely a positive change as they had pinpoint aim at whatever distance they were from us. Reduced accuracy of hyena throwers airburst, black tusk mini tanks grenade, and cleaners turrets napalm airburst. So all positive changes. NPC blind fire accuracy. This was another issue. They could go into cover and just blind fire with superb accuracy. Uh, they felt it was too effective. These changes reduce NPCs possible damage output while blind firing. I did see this today in some of my manhunt activities. Uh, they're a little more wild when they're behind cover. Uh, and this was on heroic. So this is a, a positive change. Changes reduced how accurate NPCs are while blind firing. NPCs no longer blind fire with a shotgun or sniper rifle. Imagine that beautiful and tank archetypes no longer blind fire their weapons that's a big one too um don't discredit that one that's big NT uh, excuse me npc aggressiveness developer comment there's no easy global fix for npc aggressiveness we know that so they're they've got to basically go and i guess tweak the different uh, npc factions uh, individually changes Reduced frequency and aggressiveness of NPC behavior to advance on hidden targets. Uh, that's basically when we are in cover, how hard they push on us uh, being behind cover. Uh, they basically had no fear. They would walk through your bullet streams and take millions of hit points of damage. I don't know why, but they did. Uh, fixed prolonged aggressiveness circling caused by some NPCs reactions to targets being too close. Uh, they would simply just circle around you kind of like an angry swarm. 
Uh, fix some status effect reactions, which could cause non-tank NPCs to path towards players aggressively. Uh, further uh, lowered likelihood of tank arc archetype, excuse me, to rush towards player hives and turrets. Okay. Uh, and adjusted status effects, reaction pri uh, priorities to fix issue that allowed uh, ensnared NPCs to still move if blinded or burned. Okay, all positive things. Uh, NPC ability nerfs. Uh, certain NPC healing abilities were too strong. Uh, yeah, the white tusk on a legendary. Uh, these changes reduced their strength. Black tusk support station tuning. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, can no longer heal warhounds and mini tanks. Thank you. Support station is, excuse me, support station is no longer heals destructible props. Uh, I appreciate that one too. Legendary version of support station now checks in line of sight and has healing cap amounts like normal version. So uh, if you are familiar with the way the uh, healer hive works, it needs to have line of sight on one of your squad mates or else it can't send out the the nanobot to go repair them. Well, the white tusk on legendaries, they didn't have to. As long as they were in the halo, those things would fire out everywhere and heal them. Uh, armor kits no longer completely heal bounties and other bosses. Okay. Although hunters still heal completely. Thank God. Let's leave them in there. Player buffs. All right. Changes. We buffed player skill survivability. That means our skills, once they're deployed, can take more incoming damage. Positive change. I like it. Buff damage of player status effects. Yes. Bleed, poison, and napalm. I would have liked to have seen something else. Um, possibly the uh, the fire damage uh, needs to do a little more. Needs to do a little more. It's about 10% too low right now. I would have liked to have seen that in there. Buffed in cover blind fire for players. So uh, basically, what they've done they reduced the size of our hit boxes when NPCs are uh, in cover and are blind firing, and uh, this should make it feel less risky for players to blind fire at NPCs. Okay. Instant season level unlocks, uh, i.e. microtransactions. Players are now able to purchase instant season level unlocks. Hmm. A level can be purchased for 100 premium credits in the season UI. So that's basically uh, $1 USD. Um, I'm a, not a big advocate of microtransactions. I don't like them in games. Um, I don't think you should need any of this. If you're playing, you know five hours a week, six hours a week, you should be able to finish off a season before it ends. Uh, and down here, bug fixes, first improvements to the issues, uh, oh, excuse me, first improvements to the issues causing FPS drops in the dark zones, hello, during extractions and longer play sessions. Positive, great first fix. Fix issues that could cause the NPCs for the Saturn Manhunt and Gold King bounties to spawn past the Klaus Gate and make them inaccessible. I never saw that. Fix an issue causing players to be unable to enter the technology lab in Kenley College. I don't play Kenley College, so don't care about that. Fix an issue causing players to be unable to remove the recommended activity projects from the HUD. Yes, this is a big one. This is annoying right here, this one. Fix an issue causing the friendly oxidizer chem launcher skill to cause damage to uh, allied player skills. Okay. Fix an issue causing the frenzy talent to incorrectly stay active after swapping weapons. Yeah, we all saw that on YouTube. Fix an issue causing players on Stadia to crash when accessing the Central Aquarium Classified Assignment. Uh, if I'm correct, that's the one that has the Buzz Boss on it. So, Stadium users, uh, you now get to fight against me in the game. Or at least, I like to think it's me. It's probably not me, but whatever. Fix an issue that can cause the Secret Mind skill to have a lower than intended cooldown. Um, I don't see why that's a problem. If they could be on zero second cooldowns, I'd love it. Fix an issue that caused players to be unable to interact with the scrambler during the settlement blockade activity. Okay. Fix an issue that could cause the doors to not open during the breakthrough, the Black Tusk forces beat and the DARPA research lab main mission. That could be a problem. Fix an issue that could cause progression to be blocked after getting killed by rogue agents during the invaded Grand Washington Hotel main mission. Never seen rogue agents on Grand Washington. Most other missions, but not Grand Washington. Fix an issue that caused players to be unable to pick up keys and Operation Dark Hours normal mode after interacting with the crates. Big problem. Thank you for fixing that. Fix an issue that could cause several Kajika bosses to be spawned in the Pathway Park main mission. Yes, you could have multiple Kajikas running around in that first uh, section when you first encounter them. Fix an issue that could cause enemy NPCs to spawn out of thin air during open world activities. I see this uh, more than I would like to on PC. Uh, they just insta-spawn. They basically come out of the heavens and boom, they're there. Fix an issue that could cause two buttons to have the same function when engaging in a global event and having a GE reward available. Uh, that's a big issue. 
Mm. So there you go. There are all of the uh, patch notes quickly uh, run through for title update 9.1. I'll leave a link to these down in the video description below. And uh, give me just a second. I'm going to hop over and I want to show you what this new, um, I guess what we call explosive trap skill looks like. Uh, I've got a little bit of video from it and uh, we'll basically end the video up there. So give me just a moment. All right, thank you for being patient. I have actually jumped over here to the base of operations. This is the quartermaster. And if you go over here to the uh, shock trap or where you can see the shock trap, there is a new skill variant that is locked. It is called the explosive trap and it scatters a minefield of small devices that will detonate when enemies move in proximity. Now, obviously the placeholder of the shield just uh, wildly shooting away is totally incorrect. It's just a, I guess a random placeholder that they put in there. But uh, this could be an interesting skill, especially because it, it brings out a lot of damage. Uh, I personally use the shock trap variant quite a bit on my crowd control build. So this could add another damage element where you could actually spring traps in front of uh, spawn closets. And uh, I'd be interested to see just how much damage this could put out. But uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. That looks like it's probably going to be at the end of the next manhunt. So we'll have to go through those weeks and weeks of uh, specific target, you know, one, two, three, four. And then finally we get to uh, take on the last boss. I was actually able to finish Jupiter today and got the EMP sticky bomb. So, yeah. Anyways, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this very quick title update 9.1 and possible leak of the new skill variant of video. And as always, I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please smash that sub button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a fat thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. If you feel like supporting me and my full-time YouTube content creation, please check in the video description for links to my Patreon and Teespring merchandise store. You can also follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts on most things gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. And until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.